blah, 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 blah. I don't even know what I'm talking about. My book situation, I'm in the middle of reading like 10 different books and that's how my brain feels right now. So I guess this is a weekend reading vlog. It's uh, Super Bowl Saturday, the day before Super Bowl Sunday. Um, I don't know what time it is, 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning, something like that. It's pretty chilly, but it is beautiful and sunny outside. Um, so I've basically been sitting on the couch with like a stack of books. I don't know if this is an ADHD thing or just like a common bookish person thing, but do you ever feel like, like you want to read all the books? Like I know we all have it, like we want to read all the books, but you can't almost like settle into and just enjoy the one book you're reading because you're so much anticipating the next book. So I've literally been reading like 10 pages of like certain, like certain, noisy, two noisy truck pickups passing each other. Anyway, I've literally been reading like 10 pages of one book and then 10 pages of another book and 10 pages of another book. Uh, and I didn't even get through the books that I had a stack of, but um, I'll show you those books later. Um, two of them were actually work, work related women's hormone kind of stuff. Um, anyhow, um, I have my earbuds in. I'm about to listen to while I walk with uh, while I walk with Stevie, Queenie by Candice Cardi Williams, and or I think it, I think it's actually Candice Cardi Williams, not Candice. Um, so I have I'm listening to the audiobook, which I started last weekend or early last week, and I have like just under two hours left of it. Um, so I would say like two thirds to three quarters of the way through. And I haven't listened to it since I think Tuesday because I just had a really crap day on Tuesday. I woke up, I, I had a dream that I think was actually influenced by something that was happening in the story. So in the story, Queenie, who's our main character, she's, uh, she's black English in like 25, I think. And she's just, you know, it, it's kind of like it's been compared to Bridget Jones. So it's kind of like the, the, the black Bridget Jones. And, um, well, I mean, it's, it's definitely its own thing, but I, I, I definitely see the, uh, the comparison there uh, for simplicity's sake. And kind of part of the premise of the book, like her situation in her life is that she has, uh, she and her, she, she believes that she and her boyfriend are kind of on a break. Um, and so she's basically dealing or not dealing with her feelings by kind of like sleeping around and, uh, she's just not making a lot of good life choices in her life. And so I think that the idea of this, like being on a break, but very much believing that they're going to get back together, um, influenced a dream that I ended up having, uh, like early Tuesday morning. And um, my late husband and I were high school sweethearts, but we did break up for about five months after I graduated from high school. He was a year behind me in school. And um, we actually kind of dated each other during that time. And then I was like, no, we can't do this. We were together or we're not. And then once we were back together, we were back together for good. But um, because I had had, I think that similar kind of experience. And I really did believe too, that while we were on our break, um, even though it wasn't necessarily a break, we were broken up. I still believed very much that we were going to be back together. Um, and so anyway, I had a dream that we were in that phase and I don't remember the specifics of it, but it was basically just a very stressful, distressing dream of being back in that kind of like emotional and mental state of uh, just feeling rejected. And um, so I kind of woke up on the wrong side of the bed and then I just, you know, I had kind of like a big life thing that I had to deal with uh, first thing that morning that was difficult and uh, just, it was not a great day. And I had just so much stress and anxiety going on. And I'm listening to the book on audiobook. And I was actually, I decided, all right, I need to take a couple hours and just like go do something for myself. I had a gift card to Barnes and Noble that I got for Christmas that I hadn't used yet. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go buy the house in the Cerulean Sea because I just keep hearing that it's like the most pleasant, joy-filled, uplifting fantasy experience. And that sounds exactly like what I need. And then I also got a couple of those women's hormones books I, I just mentioned. Um, and so while I'm on my way to go 
do this like self-care uh, kind of thing, I'm literally like hyperventilating because my, my anxiety is so bad. And also I had run out of my Xanax that I keep in my car. Um, and uh, so I didn't have anything that I could take at that moment. So I'm like trying to do breathing exercises. And meanwhile, I'm listening to this book that is like stressing the crap out of me. And <laughs> because um, just what, what she's going, I'm just empathizing too much, I guess, with, uh, with Queenie and where she was in her own life. And then the dream that I'd had that morning probably wasn't helping that. So anyway, I haven't, I decided as a self-care, <laughs> um, I decided to stop listening to that. I don't remember what I listened to instead, but um, I stopped listening to that and I haven't returned to it. So I'm gonna stop talking for you to you for now and um, get back to that and hopefully uh, I can enjoy it and it doesn't stress me out and I can just enjoy uh, the story of someone else's life. These aren't things that I'm experiencing. Um, so I'll get back to you later. Okay, so today, or actually uh, on the 4th, was my cousin Joey's uh, 34th birthday. Joey has Angelman syndrome. It's a chromosomal abnormality. And um, so he's developmentally delayed. And COVID birthday, his birthday is a really big deal. Lots of, um, it's always a big deal every year, big party. Um, they have a lot of really close family friends. And then family like that comes down from Chico um, to be uh, to be with him. And so for him not to have a birthday party is kind of a big deal. So we're doing this car parade thing. And they actually got, uh, they actually got a fire truck to come and lead the parade, which was really cool. So we're doing two loops. So the second loop, I guess you gotta put the hat, you gotta put stuff on. Here's birthday. Oh. Birthday provisions to be worn. Bubbles. and stuff like that so I wish I could be close to him and seeing his reaction to getting to see the firefighters right there but I can't get into the bubbles <laughs> so hopefully my cousin uh, his little sister is uh, taking a video or something so we can get to see his reaction a lot of the neighbors are it's really cool If I can blow bubbles without, I don't have a passenger. So if I can blow bubbles without getting it all over my car. So actually, while we're waiting in line, a little story about birthday hats. I hate wearing anything with an elastic thingy birthday hat because on Joey's first or second birthday, so I would have been four or five, my uncle said, hey, you know what I used to do to your mom and your aunt when we were little? And he reached out and snapped it. I will never let him live it down. Oh, sure. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so it is now Sunday and Super Bowl Sunday. I finished Queenie yesterday afternoon. Um, fortunately, I was you're a little bit crooked. Hang on. Fortunately, I was in just like a, a, a better mood. Um, like anxiety wise yesterday when I was when I was finishing it off 
and I really did enjoy it despite the amount of anxiety that I was experiencing kind of along with her. Um, I realized because I was listening to the audiobook, one of the things for me that I think was contributing to the anxiety is that um, many times throughout the book, there are uh, text message communications happening. And so in the audiobook, you would hear like the buzz of, of the text alert happening. And for me, and I think this probably goes back to um, like middle of the night phone calls um, from the hospital or from the nursing staff about my late husband. So like hearing phones ring and like text mess, it's like it's a particularly like grating sound for me. So I'm already feeling anxious and hearing that I think was kind of adding to that for me. But I really did enjoy this watching Queenie's journey. There's, you know, good talks about um, mental health. There's kind of in the background, her, her mom is a little bit in and out. Her, um, her grandparents are very much a part of her life. And her, her mom is somewhat absent because her mom has had, uh, she, like, I think three years previous to the present day, her mom had been in an abusive relationship and she's, um, She's living in like a hostel during, um, I guess, a trial, I think, that was happening. Um, it's kind of like in the background. It's like not much of a thing. Her mom's absence, both in her growing up and kind of in her present day, are very much kind of part of Queenie's... Stevie, that's not yours. Uh, very much part of Queenie's life um, and her... Is kind of who she is, um, and then the, the very the very real presence of her 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 very Jamaican grandparents as well. So yeah, I I really really enjoy this. I think that I probably if I had been reading the physical version of it, I probably wouldn't have felt the anxiety quite as um, intensely as I was. <laughs> um, but yeah, despite despite my own personal like mental health situation that was happening along with it, um, I really enjoyed this story. And one of the big things too, and I'm glad I got to read this during Black History Month too, is that often when we when we have books about Black characters, it's very much, um, you know, traumatic. Um, and this is just a regular. 25 turning 26 year old young woman who is going through things that people in their mid-20s black white and everywhere in between go through so i really enjoyed just having a, a, a real life or a, a a very um what's the word i'm looking for uh not accessible like relatable relatable is the word relatable story even though my life is nothing like hers um this could have been anybody um and, um, you know, her experience as, you know, she's like a third generation or I guess second generation um, uh, English person, family from Jamaica. So we have we have that aspect of it, of like the immigrant life and uh, the different culture, um, specifically Jamaican culture, not necessarily because she's black, but because she's Jamaican, um, the, the influence that that has in her life and everything. So, yeah, I thought it was really, really good. And I could see uh, I could see rereading this in the future um, in physical form. And because it's so like perfect, because I didn't actually physically read it, this book is so perfect. Um, but anyway, so I finished that, and I think that's the first book I finished this month. Um, or maybe I finished, so I can't remember. I don't think I ever talked about finishing The Crimson Petal in the White. Um, I either finished this at the end of January or at the beginning of February, but I ended up giving this four stars. I really, really loved it. Like I talked about in my last reading vlog where I was in the middle of reading it, even though this is like 900 pages, I never felt like I was slogging through this 900 page mammoth. And even though much of the storytelling is, is very much like the day-to-day -day life of Sugar, this, uh, uh, prostitute who, who grew up her mom was her her madam grew up as a um in a brothel um and then she kind of she basically gets bought kind of um taken in as a as a paid mistress i suppose um by this uh, wealthier man who's kind of coming into his own um and she is elevating they're kind of both elevating together and it's just like their day-to-day -day life so the story is progressing and, and moving along but not a lot is happening um, it was still really, really intriguing and, and interesting and then just really entertaining, I think, juxtapositions between uh, this just kind of like uh, beautiful language and then like crap in the streets. <laughs> um, 
uh, just like this seedy, dark London setting. And then I am, I don't think I've talked about this as at all. I'm like three quarters or more through The Lies of Locke Lamora. This is the first in the Gentleman Bastards series. And I actually, it's a really awesome addition. Um, it's a trilogy. And so there are three of these. I only have the first one. I got this one for Sam for Christmas last year and we never got around to reading it. This is part of my kind of like booktube made me do it project. This is a major favorite of Murphy Napier. And um, I can see why. It's like, it. The, so the Gentleman Bastards are a basically a gang of thieves, but they're, they're kind of their like shtick or their, their angle is that they are very well trained in the art of thievery, but also in the art of being a gentleman and being able to kind of blend in and uh, transform themselves into any class or culture. And so they can, um, they're really kind of like con men and lots of stuff happens. And this is definitely a book where First of all, there's a very strong friendship. Friendship is a very, um, these male friendships are very much a part of the, the, the overall story. Um, I believe that probably going into the future, there's a female character where, that it's only referenced at this point. And she's not, at least so far, she's not present in this book. So I imagine that she's gonna probably kind of kind of going to come in in the later books. But this is one that the stakes are real and, um, you know, your, 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 your people aren't safe. So yeah, the, the, the stakes are real. So it's not one of those things where like they get into a sticky situation and then they're going to get out of you. Like you always know that they're going to get out of it, out of it. Um, you basically learn the hard way that the, yeah, the stakes are real. I don't know how to say that differently right now. Um, and then I'm reading a short story collection, Friday Black by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya probably not saying that right and I apologize. This is a short story collection and I read I think three or four stories. Um, I'm on page 85 so like close to halfway through this. This is really really good. So far this is, I don't have a huge history of short story reading uh, in my past but this is I think one of my favorites I've ever read so far. The one that's really sticking with me right now um, is called The Hospital Wear. No, not that one. Lark Street. Lark Street. And it was about, it was kind of it, hard to read, hard to talk about, but it was basically about this teenage, I, th I think he's a teenager, a teenage boy and his aborted, just aborted babies who are like these like tiny little things are actually like talking to him and calling him daddy and asking him about, asking him about mommy. And there's twins, there's a boy and a girl. And it's this kind of story, um, and it's uh, the, the, you, the mom becomes involved as well, and they like go to see a psychic and all this. But it uh, it made it really, it just really kind of makes the, the the idea of abortion very real. Um, and I thought it was just a really interesting take on it. Um, and yeah, the Fink oh man, the Finkelstein Five. It's it's really it's really good. So if you like short stories. Um, this is a really, really good one, and I would love to see like more from this author. I think this is his debut. Yeah, Friday Black is his first book, and he's done a lot of like fiction writing contests. So I really want to see more um, from this uh, this author. He looks to be a a young black man. Um, so yeah, looking more forward to more from him. So I f I'm feeling a little bit like, as I kind of mentioned yesterday, a little bit just like ADHD with like lots of things in the mix. So you know, I'm in the middle of reading this. I'm in the middle of reading this. I just finished Queenie, so an audiobook is always kind of in the wings. I also picked up, um, when I was having a bad day last week and did some book shopping, I bought Beyond the Pill by Dr. Jolene Brighton. This is a book basically about women's hormone health and um, essentially that for decades now, the easy solution for dealing with women's hormone health has just put her on the pill without looking at, first of all, the long-term effects of being on the pill, and um, also just the lifestyle things that you could be doing that would give you even better results. And, um, and I'm not talking about birth control, but the hormonal aspects of, uh, of being on. I got put on the pill when I was 12 years old because of uh, basically really, really bad menstrual um, uh, symptoms, 
like missing school, drenched in sweat, throwing up, like terrible, terrible symptoms. And um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the subtitle here is a 30 day program to balance your homo- hormones, reclaim your body and reverse the dangerous side effects of the birth control pill. And so in my professional life, as I'm dealing with uh, weight loss and optimizing health in, in women in kind of the middle age, um, pre-menopause, perimenopause, menopausal, uh, postmenopausal women, uh, this is very much, um, women's hormone health is very much on my mind and part of how I um, am working with my clients. So something I wanna learn more about, I myself got off the pill um, about a year, almost a year and a half ago um, after been, being on it off and on for like 25 years. And um, now I'm doing more natural things to, um, to help alleviate the symptoms. And then similar to that, I have The Wisdom of Menopause by Christian Christian Northrup, Creating Physical and Emotional Health During the Change. So similar, this seems to be a little bit, bit more of a holistic look at menopause in general as like a, as a, as a, as a life change. And I've only read the, the introduction in the first, I think I'm still in, the, I'm still in the, the first chapter. And I think she's gonna get more into like the science and stuff of it, but right now she's really talking about like the change in the hormones causes a very, very much of a change in a woman's perspective because kind of through your reproductive years, it behooves you survival wise to to really be concentrated on your family unit on raising your kids on your significant other and then as hormones change um and you know likely your your kids are now adults there's this shift that happens and she calls it the hormonal veil lifts and um we see a lot of divorce in kind of middle-aged divorces as women as, as this hormone change happens if your significant other isn't kind of open to you also kind of changing and evolving um, and and now dipping into more um, creativity, looking more rather in your family unit, looking out more and wanting to explore a bit, that can be really challenging on relationships. Um, So yeah, I mean, this is a behemoth of a book. I just keep picking up these gigantor books. So this one I think is, is like over 600 pages before we get to the resources. And then I'm really wanting to pick up The Color Purple by Alice Walker. So, you know, I have, I have a whole show. It's not, it's, it's not even all of them, but I have this whole shelf right there of books by black authors. And I read black authors all through the year. And so I think for me, during Black History Month, I particularly want to be focused on more classic and modern classic works um, by black authors. So The Color Purple, um, Invi- uh, Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison is up there as well. I also have another country by James Baldwin, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do a, 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 I don't think I'll be able to get to both Another Country and Invisible Man uh, during this month. So yeah, there's a ton over there. You know, Jasmine Ward, Zadie Smith, Colson Whitehead, um, the Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett um, that I want to get to, but um, I, yeah, I kind of want to just prioritize more of the somewhat more historical uh, black authors for right now. But anyway, I'm feeling super, super scattered, basically. Blah, 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 blah. I don't even know what I'm talking about. My book situation, I'm in the middle of reading like 10 different books, and that's how my brain feels right now. What I'm actually going to do before kind of any Super Bowl kind of stuff starts is just spend some more time with the gentleman bastards. Uh, Sunday morning and I've got a lot of stuff to do, um, but it's also the kids and I are supposed to be doing a reading day today. So um, it's like a little after eight right now. And um, I finally like gotten myself in gear, realized like, okay, if we're going to have a reading day and I'm going to get anything done in this house, I need to get moving. So I have laundry that's sitting there. Like I just was lazy the other day and just laid it out on the couch so it doesn't get um, wrinkled, but I haven't done anything with it since. Also, I haven't done anything with my hair this morning. I at least smashed down the back so it's not sticking straight up like it was before. And then yesterday in the living room, so we created the kind of this partition 
between my parents' den, which used to be the dining room, and the family room with these bookshelves here, which the first one was challenging. It's because it's not symmetrical and it's like, it's different. It's not like building a Billy bookcase where it's really simple. Um, and then the second one actually probably took me the longest by far. Like I knew just enough to get myself in trouble um, and had to end up like undoing things and redoing things and was like super frustrated. The By the third one, my dad was able to help me and um, like I, it was like so fast and we probably did the whole thing, including like unpacking it in 45 minutes and no problem. So we haven't really put anything on them yet. The only thing we have is just like, I put some photo albums at the bottom and that, that's an ammo can actually. And on that side, I have the Harry Potter, um, like treasure chest thing. The kids zone over here is just like a disaster, um, a two year old. And so there's just like a few things on here right now. So that bookcase right there came from my grandma's house. I don't know if that's going to stay there or what I would do though with that otherwise, but basically the idea was rather than the expense of like French doors or like actually putting a wall there, um, to just do kind of a divider kind of thing. So, you know, it's like not optimal that there's that little bit of overhang on either side, but hopefully, you know, it'll function for our purposes. And then there's this guy. Are you whining? Do you have things to whine about? Huh? Oh yeah. And then there's also this gigantic mess. Three of these giant boxes plus all of the foam stuff that was inside. So yeah, that's great. So I'm gonna watch some booktube. I'm watching Comfy Cozy Up right now, her latest vlog um, while I take care of the laundry for now. And then um, as far as like my TBR for our cozy reading day, readathon day, whatever, whatever we're calling it, I am a little over halfway through the color purple, purple, so I'll definitely be taking that. I might take Friday Black. I finished another story in that. Was it called Zoom, Zoom Land or something? What was that one called? It was kind of a cool speculative if I can look at the right thing what was that called Zimmerland Zimmerland was the last one I just read um it was like this there was like this uh, almost like a uh what's the word amusement park kind of thing where you can go and have these almost like problem solving simulations but it basically ends up um, always ends up with the black guy who works there getting shot. Um, so there's more to it than that, but that's kind of the basics of it. Um, so essentially, when a gun is an option, I guess I guess the point is like when a gun is an option, then problem solving goes out the window, or any attempt any attempt that isn't using the gun at problem solving goes out the window. Um, and then what else? Hmm. I might end up starting, I moved like all of these like Instagram projects and booktube projects, everything is moving around. So yeah, currently I have just stacks of books down there. So I might, I might start, I might start Invisible Man today. Invisible Man. Um, I need more coffee. All right, I'm going to stop yammering to you and actually do the things. So here's our food spread. We have veggies and grapes and cuties and then like crackers and cheese and salami and holly. Mm -hmm. And then that's our sweet thing. Little bunny grams, whoops, falling. Oh, and we got some veggie straws and that's Gordon, Commissioner Gordon. Hello kitty, Doris, this is cinnamon. I forgot his name is Cinnamon because we call him Kiki and stuff. Oh, they call him Kiki. His name is Cinnamon. Uh, what books are you reading? Um, 
Rose, but I'm starting Rose with Under Hear My Cry today. Ooh, cool. And then cool. I'm still re reading Tilly, but I have this system where, so it's kind of hard to read books that I'm kind of far in. Um, and then Harry Potter. Of course. <laughs> That's seven, right? Mm hmm Sam, what about you? I'm reading Dogman, and then Mom just bought me these. I, it's Oh, is that the Treehouse books? Mm -hmm. Cool. And I, I'm going to read Wacky Wednesday, and then more Dogman, and then I need a new butt. Yeah. And um, then this is not my hat. That's a good one. And then... <gasps> Corduroy. Oh, yeah. Okay, I've, never, I've never read this book, so that one... Let me see. Let me see Wacky Wednesday. This was one of my favorite books when I was a kid. Like when I was a little kid. That my parents would read to me. And probably one of the first ones that I was reading. Like out loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a oh, good, yeah. good like beginning reading. Can kind of think all these wacky things happen on Wednesday. Yay. I also realized that it just happens to be Valentine's Day. Which I didn't realize when I got dressed. But I've got mm -hmm. my like pinky stuff on. And I have my... Princess Leia, reading is our only hope uh, book. So it's time to get reading. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with the color purple. I can't rip it. That's all right, you can't rip it. I need a drink. Is it empty? Okay, go ahead. It's empty. Yeah, I drank it all. Water. More water. Where'd your I just filled up your water bottle. Where'd it where's it go? Where'd it go? So it's like seven o'clock on Sunday night now. Uh, the kids and I probably did like two, two and a half hours or so of reading. It wasn't our best readathon day, but we had a really nice day together um anyway, and my sister was home, was off work today, so um got to hang out with her um for a bit too. So I think I have about eighty pages or so left of the color purple less than that um and so i'm gonna try to get this finished tonight basically it's just gonna depend on can i stay awake for it so i'm like washed up in in my pajamas and yes at seven o'clock um and like ready to go to bed essentially as soon as i finish this so i'm hoping that i can finish this before i fall asleep chances there is a chance that that won't happen um, but I'm really, really enjoying it, and I don't think I've updated since, like, there's been kind of a change in the in, in the plot, the format. So it's, it is epistolary, and we've had, uh, Seely has been writing Dear God, and then almost like a journal entry. And then, um, but now, we have her sister, who, for a long time, she didn't know whether she was actually alive or not. She's been living as a missionary in Africa, and had been writing Celie letters all this time, but Celie's husband had been hiding the letters from her. And so now for kind of the second half, we're getting Nettie, the sister's letters to Celie. And then once Celie discovers them, Celie's letter back to Nettie. So that's how the story is told. Um, it's really, really good. Yeah, just really, really loving it. You guys, this is so good. It's like almost six o'clock Monday morning. So in true Doris mid-month book bash, I had to extend it uh, until the next morning. I couldn't stay up last night um, to finish. So finish it Monday morning. Um, it's so good. You ever feel like, why did I wait so long to read this book? But then also at the same time, it's like, no, this was the perfect time to read this book. So this book has so much and I would love to read this again. I would love to like study under someone who or just learn more more about it because I'm sure there's so much of this that I didn't get um but Celie and Nettie both especially Celie start off with so little and and has so much uh struggle and trial and trauma um in her life and then we see her we get to see her grow and have just such a variety of experiences and relationships and kind of come into her own. And there's even, she ends up kind of, uh, making pants as a, as like a, as a business. Um, and it's, it starts off like making pants for herself 
Um, rather than plowing the fields in a dress, um, why doesn't she make herself some pants um, so that she doesn't like get tripped up and get tripped up and run herself over with the plow? Um, and so it kind of, I guess, becomes this like metaphor for her like wearing the pants and getting some power and some um, some independence and. Uh, it's just so good. I, 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 w I wish I could be more articulate about it, but I, I want to kind of like, I want to like watch a bunch of videos, read some more commentary and um, just learn more about it and, and get some of these pieces that I didn't mix, uh, that I didn't, that I didn't pick up and um, hear somebody more articulate than myself kind of um, talk about it. But uh, I just really, really loved it. And I loved I love the way it ended and yeah the people the people in the story and you know there are some characters that kind of get um redeemed a bit um in each other's eyes and, and in our eyes and uh just there is um there's gray area I guess where they're at the beginning, certain people seem kind of, there's like black and white, good and bad. And then we get to see those colors mix a bit. Um, and then also, I don't know if I talked about this yesterday, but in the um, the Neti portions where we're in Africa, we also get to see um, the English uh, colonization and how that ends up impacting, um, you know, the native, the native people of Af Africa and um, the encroachment basically of other people's will um on them and how that affects them so yeah awesome wish I could be more articulate than that but um have you read the color purple if not what are you waiting for and I think that's gonna wrap up the vlog I'm gonna get dressed for the gym and start my week For all y'all jealous of my sunny California weather, it does actually rain here sometimes. It's it's not very cold right now. I don't know. I was guessing 50s, I guess. It's like 8.30 or so in the morning. So I just wanted to show you. It's not always sunny here. Fortunately, we are out of the drought, although we haven't had a lot of rain this winter. But there you go. Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.